Well, let's go ahead and start. If there's uh, other people that come in, I'm actually recording this and I will send it to Arnold uh, to uh, send to you and I can also send him the talk. So what we were supposed to do was we were supposed to have a grand introduction of Optimal at the Askris meeting, but COVID uh, uh, changed that. So uh, my goal is to go ahead and do these small presentations to introduce Optimal to the US market. Optimal, we've been actually using it for several years here as we've been working to get it through and approved in the United States, but it's a drop that's being used in Australia and New Zealand for several years. There's a big push uh, out there to use Manuka honey for a lot of different uh, medical uh, products. You hear your patients all the time talking about the use of honey uh, for different things, allergies, just for good health, uh, using it on their skin, and all of these different things that each day come up on the use of honey. So let's get right to it. If you don't know, I, I basically, our practice concentrates on, uh, my part of the practice, I concentrate on cataract, LASIK, and dry eye. I've actually had a dry eye clinic for over 20 years, been doing dry eye research in a lot of different avenues like intense pulse light, um, LED light, and uh, we're doing several of the studies of the drops that are already approved here in the United States, like, uh, um, like Oxervate, uh, Lafitagrass, like Zydra, Sequa, Restasis. So we've kind of had our hand on all of these different things. I've had doctors and patients for years tell me about all sorts of different drops. So we've tried a whole bunch of different drops in our clinic for our dry eye patients and some work and some don't. We've kept the ones that work. So some of the foreign drops that have worked for us, one is oculosin, which is an all natural artificial tear that has aloe vera, chamomile, and propolis. So that's actually a drop that you can get from Arnold uh, or you can get from us and we'll talk about how you can get those drops. And Optimal, which is Manuka honey. Now the first time I ever heard about uh, Manuka honey was for uh, burn patients. So I knew they were using it as a way on skin that was burned to revitalize that skin, protect that skin. So what is Manuka honey? Uh, bees pollinate uh, the Manuka bush in New Zealand and Australia to make a specific type of honey. And there's special health properties in honey that can help your digestive system. If you put it on the skin, it can uh, help your skin. Uh, people ingest honey for their allergies, and we'll, we're going to talk about all this science. Uh, the antimicrobial properties of uh, honey, and it also can boost the immune system. And all these things are now scientifically studied. So this isn't just kind of voodoo science anymore. This is something that's being studied by uh, several different scientists and physicians in different specialties. And it all basically started with showing that putting some Manuka honey on, on burns helped it heal quicker. So that got uh, Anthony uh, Maloney out in uh, Australia working on taking this information for helping wound healing and seeing if it had an effect on dry eye. So there's two forms, and there's actually also a nasal spray that we actually use for uh, patients with allergies, but there's two forms. There's the drop form and the gel form. The drop form has about 16% of this Manuka honey, and the ointment has much more, about 98%. And I'm going to talk about when I use a drop uh, and when I use an ointment and we're working to try to get the nasal spray since it works so well 
here and I'll give you updates on when that happens. So why this honey and not just any honey? Why can't I just go to my local uh, uh, farm, bee farm and get their honey and make it into a drop? Or uh, what is so special about Manuka honey and now you see it everywhere uh, on the shelves? Well, the ingredient that gives you all of these anti-inflammatory properties and antibacterial properties and those things is the methyl glyxyl, um, the MG. And Manuka honey has the highest amount of MG out of all of the honey. So that's why Manuka honey works so much better in all these medical things that we're trying to use it for. So the high MG gives it high anti-inflammatory properties. There's studies, and this has been studies that uh, have done by uh, Dr. Schmidt showing that it has antibacterial properties, especially for gram positive bacteria that are on the lid margin. But better than that, it, it has the ability to kill MRSA, which now if you look at the general population, you can have up to 20% of people who uh, have MRSA, especially when you have a patient that comes in and they're a nurse or a technician or doctor, anybody works in the healthcare prof uh, profession, they probably will, they, they do have a higher rate of MRSA, so methicillin resistant Staph aureus. And then Dr. Toyo's doctors are trying to get in on the meeting, but you have to accept them. Sorry about that, guys. We're cut off for a second. Uh, new technology, uh, our new world. So uh, it has the ability to kill off MRSA. On the allergy side, what's very important is the cytokine NFKB. Uh, NFKB is made in a high amount uh, in uh, allergic reactions. And that becomes important when I talk about how we're using Optimel not only for dry eye, but for allergy and for uh, the high percentage of patients that have both allergy and uh, dry eye. And then the thought always with honey is that it has microallergens that if you're taking it on a consistent basis, uh, those microallergens will desensitize you to uh, what you have. So that's the uh, idea of taking local honey because those same microallergens. But what we're finding is uh, these two advantages of the Manuka honey, the decreasing in NFKB and these microallergens are helping these patients not only when we use it as a drop, but when we use it as a nasal spray. And why is that important? Let's go on here. I'm gonna go to um, this slide here. So on the allergy property, uh, it's better than an antihistamine. So all the drops and nasal sprays that we have, if it's not a steroid, uh, our antihistamines, which are actually working on the H1 and H2 receptors, which gives you some anticholinergic effect like dry eyes and uh, dry mouth. All right, so there's several studies on the use of Manuka honey optimal drops for dry eye. Uh, one that recently got published in the British Journal of Ophthalmology is the use of twice a day um, uh, optimal drops uh, to see if you could get an effect on tear breakup time, uh, OSDI, uh, meibomian gland expressibility, uh, Schirmer's, uh, and tear osmolarity. And it turns out after about 28 days, you see an improvement on all of these uh, factors. And that's what I'm seeing too in our clinic, that uh, a consistent use of this uh, Optimal drop will improve your meibomian gland function. And that might be a function of 
the de decreased bacterial load on the lid margin. The lid margins look clearer. The patients report that their eyes feel better, so that it improves uh, symptomatically. And this study showed with uh, OSDI. So everything uh, improves, and it's not an immediate effect. This is when you're talking about the meibomian gland dysfunction, but it is an effect that happens uh, over time. And I'm finding the same thing with allergy. If you put an antihistamine drop in your eye right away, that actually will make the patients feel better on their allergy. Uh, that's not the way the I'm seeing Optimel work. Uh, Optimel. I tell patients, use it on a consistent basis, and little by little, you're going to see uh, the effects. So this isn't the only paper. There are several papers that have been published, but I think this is kind of the most important. So if you look up this paper, you're going to find a lot of uh, good information on some pre-existing papers that they used for their bibliography. So how do we use it in our clinic? So we're doing it uh, twice a day installation. We're mainly using uh, the drop. If we use the ointment, it's once a day. Okay, so when we first got Optimel, really the, uh, we were uh, handing out ointment more than we were handing out drop. The reason being is I thought to myself, it has so much more Manuka honey. So, you know, we're talking about almost 100% Manuka honey. The problem with the ointment is the stinging. So this has a very low pH. The Manuka honey, uh, so if your pH is in this, if your natural pH is about 7.2, this is in the six and close to the high fives. So as you know, and you may or may not know this, dry eye patients actually have a little bit of an acidic uh, tear film. So they really like uh, drops that are more basic. So if you have a drop like a, that has a pH of 7.8, they'll probably tell you this drop feels so much better when, when it could be the same drop as a drop that has a lower pH. Perfect example of that is uh, I used to, before I had all these other medications, I used to give patients Brom Day. It had a uh, pH of 8.3, and all of my patients loved that non steroidal uh, Bromfenac, uh, and I used it as a dry eye drop. Well, they changed the formulation to Prolenza, same medication, same Bromfenac but they lowered the pH in Prolenza to 7.8, and I had a lot of patients that I switched from Brom Day to Prolenza, and uh, they didn't like it. They said, oh, this, this drop stings. So it shows you the only th difference between those two drops was this decrease in pH. So the drop stings. The ointment stings even more. So, uh, this is something that you have to warn the patients about that, hey, when you instill this, this is gonna sting. Um, and that once there, it equilibrates in their tear film, that sting goes away. So this isn't a sting that lasts all day. This is a sting that uh, they'll get for about 30 seconds to a minute with the drop, and then that's it. Then their eyes feel very good. With the ointment, it could be two to three minutes and you're gonna get some redness. Uh, so when we started, we were doing more of the ointment, but as we progressed along in the use of it, and now I'm going on four or five years of using this and, and trying it out, that the drop uh, we're using much more, I would say in 90% of patients, the drop works well enough, gives them enough Manuka honey to take care of allergy and dry eye. Now you have some patients with severe forms of meibomian gland and dry eye that I progress up to the ointment. And one of the things that I notice about the Manuka honey is that it does provide a nice little barrier shield. So if you've got some of these patients that, uh, older patients, completely uh, burned out glands that you can't bring back with IPL or something else, 
This gives them a coat of relief that can last at least uh, up to about six hours. So that's where the ointment is. That's, that The ointment I reserve for the most severe, severe uh, cases. I would say we use about 95% of our patients are on the drop. But if you want good compliance with this drop, you kind of warn them beforehand of what's it going to feel like. We actually have a little sample Optimal here that once I decide I'm gonna get a patient on Optimal, I put it in their eye and I, uh, so that they can see um, what the stinging is like. The preservative is benzoic acid and I actually like the benzoic acid more than the BAK. I actually find that the benzoic acid um, isn't as rough on the cornea uh, as uh, BAK. Um, and the ointment doesn't have any benzoic acid. Now, it is naturally preserved. The honey has antibacterial uh, effects so that you're, with the ointment you're getting in the 90% range of the Manuka honey so that there's uh, less uh, degradation of the medication once you use it. So really, there's not much benzoic acid in the drop. Uh, because the uh, Optimel is pretty much self-preserved. And what I was saying before, great lu lubricant because not only does it do all the anti-inflammatory, antibacterial properties, but it actually coats, the honey actually coats the front surface of the eye. So patients feel really good when they use it. So, uh, it, you know, in honey, it's just like anything else with honey, I would not use under the age of one. Their immune system is not as strong uh, so that there's a small risk of uh, botulism. So I would not use this in any patient under the age of one. The ointment doesn't have any benzoic acid uh, and that's because it has the um, higher amount of honey. Um, there's no BAK in it. It's great for allergy. The, the problem that I have with the antihistamines is they dry. Uh, so even uh, a nasal spray like uh, Patinase, the antihistamine effect of it will dry patients out and can even uh, dry their eyes. Even the best Sorry about that, guys. So um, even the best antihistamine uh, drops, Bepreve, Patidae, now you can get Patidae over-the-counter, uh, Zatador, all of these, they're not great allergy drops for dry eye patients because they do dry out the eye even more. So I try to stay away uh, from those drops. The allergy effect meaning uh, the getting rid of red eyes, getting rid of that watery sensation, that takes more time with an Optimel than it does with an antihistamine. It usually takes a few weeks. So one thing that you could do is you could use the antihistamine drop like a Bepreve or a Patidae, um, and then use the Optimel drop on top of it and then after a couple of weeks, you start weaning them off the antihistamine and then you rely on the Optimal. I do it both ways. I usually actually will um, use uh, Alrex or something that isn't an uh, antihistamine if I'm going to do that. But most of the times I just start them on Optimal once the season starts uh, for allergy and by the time it starts to really kick in, uh, they're over they're over the hump and the Optimel is keeping everything under control. You'll see less of a papillary. Oh, do, I have, do we have new participants? Sorry about that. Too late. <laughs> Sorry about that if I didn't uh, admit somebody. My bad but I'll, I'll be reviewing all this stuff in, uh, in a minute anyway. Um, so it usually takes a few weeks. So I'm actually, I, I get the, the Optimel 
uh, in their hands once the allergy season starts. And by the time